Hi guys, it's me, May Muna. Welcome to my channel. I thought I would be helpful for once and post a video about something that could actually benefit people who watch me. And this is a video based on my experience. It's going to be about mixed marriages, specifically South Asian mixed marriages. So those tend to be Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi. But this is just my experience being Pakistani married to a Bangladeshi. So I've spoken to a lot of young women on the internet, alhamdulillah, thanks to social media, I've been able to connect with so many different types of people and a lot of them are women in the same position as me, so women who are Pakistani and are married to Bangladeshi or even women who are Bangladeshi married to Pakistani. There is a lot of us in today's day and age. Whilst every marriage is different, I find that there are quite a lot of similarities between all of us there is not a lot of people talking about stuff like this it's a really taboo topic um, especially for muslim women and you know it's muslim marriages that tend to be mixed the most especially in today's day and age so i thought i would create a resource to help people if you know they have any issues or you know what being in a mixed marriage is like the first part of the series is going to be about language and language barriers in specific a lot of girls always ask me like always on instagram people are asking me oh my gosh how did you get your in-laws to accept you like being pakistani how did you get them to accept you they ask me how did you learn basic bangla like i'm so shocked you know these words how did you learn that so i have been married for four years it's been good so far a couple of bumps along the road I'm never ever ever going to be the person that's going to glamorize mixed South Asian marriages and I'm never going to be the person that's going to glamorize young marriages. I just want to get that clear. There are a lot of Muslim couples on the internet doing that and if you want to see that you can go over there and watch their videos. In my opinion, marriage is not a fairy tale. It's not. I got married when I was 21 and let me tell you, it was difficult, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But no mistake, it has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. But it was difficult. Bengalis and Pakistanis, what do we have in common? Now, we have a lot in common. Pakistanis and Bengalis are like unidentical twins. They're very, very similar. But there are a few big differences. And one of those differences is language. Now, language is a very big difference. Here's the thing with mixed marriages. They are usually love marriages. Many people who go into a love marriage usually think it's going to be easier than, say, marrying their long-lost cousin in Pakistan or Bangladesh. It's not, okay? I'm just gonna tell you, it's even harder. And this is like in a familial sense. Like in a sense where when you want to connect to the family of your husband. So we're gonna go in order. So the easiest is literally marrying your cousin. Like, in terms of getting the family to accept you, it's marrying your cousin. <laughs> then, it's marrying somebody who's the same race as you, but is not related to you. And then the hardest, in my opinion, is marrying somebody who is not related to you and is not even the same race as you. So, in terms of family accepting you, that's kind of on the end. <laughs> so, it's really difficult, okay? It's, it's not easy. And I'll explain why it's really difficult. So, your husband might like the look of you. He might like your personality and what you offer him as a person. But his family will see right through you. Why? Because they don't know you. They don't know you like he does. So they might assume the worst of you. Now, this is normal. Like, that's a safety mechanism. If you don't know somebody, you're gonna assume the worst before you assume the best. Like, everybody is guilty of that, so that's perfectly normal. If you're living with in-laws, which in the first few years of marriage, many of us will, especially if you're South Asian, you most likely will end up living with them for the first few years. It's hard, okay? But you got to understand, it's probably just as hard for them as well. Like, get, having someone new enter the family, somebody they don't know, you could be a thief, you could be a psychopath, they don't know who you are. And it's difficult seeing like somebody taking over your kitchen or seeing new laundry on the basket or unwashed cups in the sink. Like it's, it's difficult for people in that family to kind of adjust to having somebody new come in. So it's easier to be XYZ's extended cousin because at least the family knows your family. And at least they will assume that you're a good person. 
and that you're stable. Whereas if they don't know you or your family, they could assume that you could be anything. If your in-laws don't know you, you're going to be in a really awkward situation. This is especially, especially true if you cannot warm them up and charm them with language. So whenever you meet someone new, doesn't matter who it is, to break the ice, you always try to be as likable as possible. You try and communicate in a way that's that warms up the person and makes them open up to you. Now, if you don't know the language of the people that you're trying to open up to, especially if it's your parent-in-laws and their first language is not English, they speak like Bengali or Urdu, going to be really hard to get them to like warm up to you and so language barriers are a real real thing in my case I've never had a problem with getting people to like me until I got married I like to think I have a good way with words I like to think that when I speak to people people tend to like me and open up to me when I got married I was completely tongue-tied it's because I didn't know Bengali. What do I say to my in-laws who cannot understand English? How do I get my mother-in-law to like me, like to get, take a liking to me? How can I negotiate housework duties with her so that I can do what I like doing and she can do what she likes doing? How do I ask for something or say no without sounding rude? These were the kinds of issues I was faced with. I didn't know how to do any of that because I couldn't speak or understand Bengali. And I used to look at myself and I used to compare myself to my Bengali sister-in-laws. They did not have that issue. They had it a bit easier because they could actually communicate with my mother-in-law and like other family members in Bengali and I couldn't. If I said no in English to let's say my mother-in-law, it sounds rude and she will be upset and hurt. But my sister-in-law, let's say as an example, if she says no in Bengali, she can say it in a nicer way than I can and the way you say things is really, really important. Like, that's the number one rule in life. I'm going to teach this to all my kids. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. How you say something is so, so important. If you don't know how to say something, you're literally going to be in hot water and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And that's basically the situation I was in. So because there are language barriers, there is often misunderstandings. And especially when you have two women running a house, like it's already difficult enough. Having a language barrier in there makes it like 10 times, 20 times harder than it should be. And so, as you can imagine, there there is a possibility of a lot of conflict. Really simple things can be blown terribly out of proportion because no one's understanding anything. It's like all over the place. People are assuming this, you're assuming that. My point is not knowing a language and knowing a language is the difference between somebody having a good relationship with you and not having a good relationship with you. Not knowing a language is like a barrier. Unless you want nothing to do with your in-laws, which in most South Asian marriages is like impossible. <laughs> the whole culture revolves around like the paternal family. Knowing the language is important, okay? You gotta learn that stuff. If you don't, it's gonna bite you in the behind. I really wanna say, if this is you and you're trying your best to keep it together, give yourself credit. Please, give yourself credit. Forgive yourself for not knowing, okay? Be patient and allow yourself to learn. Inshallah, you will. Learning a language is hard. Don't let the pressure to learn a language get to you. It takes years to learn a language, so take your time, okay? You won't, you won't learn it in two years. I mean, if you do, then you are, mashallah, you are smart. You won't learn how to speak a language you don't know fluently in two years. It takes a newborn baby four years until they learn to speak full sentences. And babies are meant to be quicker than adults at learning. So imagine how long it would take a grown adult to learn. As you can imagine, a long time. Some things that make it easier is if you can get someone you trust to help mediate things in the beginning. So for example, it could be like your husband. Make sure that they are always around and fully in the know of everything so they can make things easier and translate if there's any issues. Another thing that helps as well is to try and get the people in your family, well your husband's family that you're living with or that you're around with often, who can speak English, to speak English around you and to speak English with you. Make a scheduled time for learning um, a language. Like for example, if you're married to a Bengali family, learning Bangla. 
like make a scheduled time for that and like stick to that so like for example if you cook with your mother-in-law together if you do that together make a scheduled time of learning Bengali when you're cooking together so if she's cooking with you she can speak to you exclusively in Bangla but the rest of the time everybody speaks English or to you and in front of you they speak English if you're related to somebody who is in an interracial marriage and they're making an effort to like learn your language if you can speak to them in English try and speak to them in English okay just to get to know them because that's more important getting to know somebody is more important than let's say teaching them your language if you think that you can help them to learn the language then ask them and if they give you permission and they're like yeah yeah speak to me in Bangla I want to learn then that's fine but don't just randomly start speaking to them in like your language expecting that them to reply in full fluent sentences like that is not gonna happen in fact that embarrasses the person and makes them want to like you know not connect with you the best way to overcome a situation where you are struggling to connect with people and where people don't fully know you or get on with you well because of language barriers is to be patient okay be patient and l let it be like don't be in too much stress or pressure you will learn okay with time you will learn inshallah so I hope this video helped. There will be more videos like this coming very soon. I've got a whole 10 part series planned, okay? Um, let me know how you guys like this and um, if there's anything you'd like to add, please leave it in the comments down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, why don't you? And um, have a nice day.